Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my January book haul. I have purchased a lot of books in January. The first book I bought was How to Be a Woman by Catelyn Moran. I've often seen Catelyn Moran's work described as feminist and a lot of friends that I have have read her as well. Then on the back of this it actually says that the book is about humour and feminism and so I bought it and I read it immediately. It is very humorous, and part memoir and then part Moran's thoughts on feminism. I will be talking more about this book in my January wrap-up. There are two gifts in this entire haul, and the first one is of my friend Abercrombie, and was a Christmas present, but Abercrombie was ill at Christmas, so we weren't really able to exchange gifts until the start of this month. The book that Abercrombie got me was Illiwaka by Peter Carey. Now, I haven't heard of this before, but I believe Faber re-released some books regarding secrets and lies and I believe that this book has an unreliable narrator who is the 139 year old Herbert Badgley. On the back he's described as a confidence trickster and this book was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. I hadn't heard of it before and I'm looking forward to reading it at some point. Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson and this is subtitled as a funny book about horrible things and I didn't know until I finished reading this book that Jenny Lawson is also known as the bloggess and blogs about her anxiety and depression and other uh, mental health issues and I was extremely glad to have read this book. I read it over a period of two days I didn't want to put the book down and I am planning a reread quite soon, probably next month once I get The Way of Kings out of the way. I also got Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, which is again subtitled as Creative Living Beyond Fear, and this is the book that helped me decide to take my break from writing. It is Elizabeth Gilbert's thoughts on creativity. The next book is a graphic novel, it is Miss Marvel Volume 4 Last Days by G. Willow Wilson and Adrian Alphona. Although I enjoyed the first three, I didn't realise that they were going to, this one was all about leading into a big Marvel Universe crossover thing, so it's really all leading to that and there's not much story for Miss Marvel herself, apart from the character finding herself and really having a conclusion to her storyline before her new storyline started after this big crossover event. And in this one, she has to save her brother and Jersey City. That's Wonderbook by Jeff Vandermeer. As someone who has written fantasy in the past, I wanted to read it and learn more about world building because that is something I've had a problem with and struggled with in the past. Really, I got this because of the writers who have written essays in it, but really this is the guide to writing imaginative fiction, many essays from the leading fantasy writers. This next book, I think, I think I'm cursed. I honestly believe there might be a curse on me, set by someone who loves Arthur Conan Doyle. When I was younger, much younger, when I was a child, they had the TV show Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. Then we read it in year six, and I discovered that Sherlock Holmes wasn't actually in the 22nd century. I invested by this point, and I knew that my nan had the... Reader's Digest edition of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, so I still have that one. But last year, I unhauled the complete illustrated short stories and the complete illustrated novels because I had no interest in reading Sherlock Holmes anymore because I just... There's something about the writing style that I find quite dull and a bit of a struggle to get through. Although I've enjoyed the TV series in the past, I don't really enjoy it as much anymore. So... My nan went to a supermarket. It had a table of books where you put a donation into a box and it went to charity. And she got me the illustrated adventures of Sherlock Holmes because I like graphic novels. I am extremely grateful to my grandmother for thinking of me. It's not a graphic novel. Although I understand where she got the thinking because each page is illustrated by Eric Kincaid in very nice watercolour. I'll probably keep this book again because of my nan for thinking of me and because I am quite fond of the illustrations and you never know. I might pick it up one day. Maybe. Probably. 
Next is a book I bought because the first book in the series was one of my favourite books of 2015 and it's Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. It's taken me a long time to purchase this book because I was trying to find a cover that I liked and then I thought that this one was the one to match my original copy but it's not. There isn't a match for my original copy because they changed covers and if I'd known that I might have made a decision sooner but I'm Charlie and some of these books I have taken a long time to read. Do I know anything about this book? I don't. If I tell you about it, will there be spoilers? Probably. Basically, this book continues the story of the Diviners. We have a short story collection that I have been seeing a lot of on booktubers' channels, and really, the only thing that got me buying this book was the bee on the cover. I am that fickle. Either way, it's At the Mouth of the River of Bees by Kidge Johnson. And yes, I did get the book because of the bee, but also because I heard that there were magical realism elements within the stories, which is something that I am very interested in. And the next one, again, Booktuber. It's a short story collection and it's By Light with New Our Names by Anne Valente. And I actually know nothing about this book. It was a short story collection that I was interested in after seeing it on Mercy's channel wrote it down because I was that interested in it but now I can't remember why I was so go and watch her video and then you'll know what I'm thinking of. The next book kind of goes to show my indecisiveness so Truth Witch was one of my most anticipated reads of the year this book follows Safia and Isult as they are chased by a blood witch. It's the first in a new series and I bloody loved it. Safia is hunted down because she is a truth witch and she's able to tell when people are telling the truth and when they're telling lies which would be an invaluable resource to many of the rulers of these different lands and this blood witch is able to stem the fact that she is a truth witch which is why he's chasing her down because he knows how much money she could get. Then there's loads of other stuff with kidnappings and battles and intrigue and I didn't originally want this edition. I wanted this edition, the American edition, and I discovered that a blog, I can't remember what it was now but I will look it up and leave the link down below because I believe that they do this sort of thing often, were getting a, you could get your copy of Truth Witch signed and sent worldwide so I did that. I originally wanted the American cover because I really enjoy the author's work. I did get a signed copy and then I found out that this wasn't going to arrive. I didn't anticipate this book arriving until February so I thought I'd buy the other one and then I'd give it away. However, having read that one and seeing the cover in all of its glory, I kind of can't choose between the covers now. So I have two copies and I will probably lend one out often, but I'm not sure whether I could bring myself to give either one of them away because I'm a terrible human being and I talk about book about unhauling books all the time, but I kind of got very attached. Yeah, it's the world in which we live. The next book I bought and have already read is The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter. This follows Evelyn. He moves to an apocalyptic New York in order to begin a new job. The whole world is in the brink of the apocalypse because, well, women, capitalised, are going round and vandalising places and there's a lot going on with racism and misogyny. Evelyn's a dick basically and ends up running off to the desert and it, whilst there he is transformed into Eve and really it's it's a very good perspective on feminist issues and it was disturbing. Yeah, there you go. There is a great story behind this next book in which a few years ago a friend of mine read this book and then she blocked me on Twitter and we don't speak anymore. 
originally when I saw that she was reading this book, I knew that it interested me, and I went on Amazon straight away, read the first chapter, and then, like I said, got blocked on Twitter. I was like, no, I don't want anything to do with anything that this person has done. But I really wanted to read the book. And I waited. And then Jane Campbell mentioned it on her channel. And that is In the House Upon the Dirt Between the Lake and the Woods by Matt Bell. This young couple moved to barren land to want to try to start a family. The wife is unable to get pregnant, so the man begins to get angry and she begins to be able to sing things to life. And I thought that it, the themes within it and well, the themes that are mentioned in the blurb seemed reminiscent of The Snow Child, and I really like that book. So, hopefully, I'll enjoy this one and maybe forget all the bad feeling I have towards certain people who shall remain nameless. And the next four books I purchased from the charity shop. Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell. I read this book a few years ago when I was at a different charity shop. I really enjoyed the book the first time around. So, got it, read it, really enjoyed it again. It's just humorous anecdotes about weird things customers say in bookshops. And then I showed it to Abercrombie and she asked to borrow it once I'd read it. And then someone else asked to borrow it once they'd read it as well. So this is going to end up like my copy of The Lacuna. And if anyone knows where that is, that'd be very nice because I lent it out to someone and I, I passed it around that many times. I've kind of forgotten who's got it, so. Next, we have Sightlines by Kathleen Jamie, and I know nothing about this book apart from the fact that it, it follows a naturalist and her thoughts. I was at work and a song for Izzy Bradley came in and I started to read it before the shop opened and then ended up buying it. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> and I haven't read any more of it since because I've been trying to get through these other books, so hopefully I'll finish those and then be able to read this one in February, but I make no promises. Apparently, this is the story, uh, from the first line of the blurb, this is the story of what happens when Izzy Bradley dies, so I imagine that it's going to follow the family after her death. Which should be brilliant and moving. There will probably be tears. And the next book I bought, I'd never heard of before, but it seemed to have themes that I quite enjoy to read about, or to see how they are handled. And this book is Miss Webster and Sharif by Patricia Duncan. And I've never heard of this author before, but apparently she's uh, maybe popular? I don't know. Is she? If anyone knows, do tell me. This 17-year-old, very acerbic older woman is sent to... She is sent to a North African country, and it's, ju it's around the time of 9-11, and when she returns to England a few weeks later, a Muslim gentleman turns up on her doorstep, having followed her to England. And it kind of deals with that whole situation, which I'm hoping will be handled well, because sometimes older people aren't really handled that well in fiction, but we will see. And finally, we have Before Scotland by Alistair Moffat, and again, this is the story of Scotland before history. There was apparently a television programme about it that I didn't see, but I purchased the book from the charity shop because I'm quite interested in Scotland and in the history of it, and so, really, it was just what I was looking for. I know nothing more about it than that, but hopefully it can inform my... It can just inform me of things, because I am woefully unknowledgeable when it comes to history. They are all the books that I purchased this month. This is also the month that I chose to pre-order a lot of books. They are books that are coming out this year that I was quite interested in. I went, I decided to do what I used to do and go through all of the lists about what books are being released this year and find out which ones I like the look of and I have pre-ordered quite a few of them and so I don't know whether there are any more coming this week, which is the last week of January, but for now I think that's enough to be going on with. I hope you enjoyed this video and that some of you can recommend these books or that you want to go and read some of these books. I don't know. Until next time, that is all.